In this video, we are going to continue talking about linear second order differential equations of the form ay double prime plus by prime plus cy equals zero. We've discussed these for the past two videos. So every time we see this kind of differential equation, what we write down is the characteristic equation or auxiliary equation associated with this differential equation. So that takes the form ar squared plus br plus c equals zero. The roots to this from the quadratic formula look like negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. All right. In the last lesson, we talked about what the solution to the, the given differential equation would look like when the roots to this uh, characteristic equation are real and distinct. In this video, what we are going to consider is that we don't actually have two distinct roots. We, rather, we have one repeated root. That happens whenever this discriminant inside the square root is zero. So if b squared minus 4ac happens to be zero, then what happens is in the numerator of this root computation, this just becomes plus or minus zero. So the roots are both of the form negative b divided by 2a. So just one real repeated root. When that happens, the root that we do have still produces a solution which we can immediately write down. So one solution is immediately e to the rx, where r is this value negative b over 2a. However, this is a second order equation. So to this solution, which I've called y1, we would also like to find another solution, which we'll name y2, which is linearly independent with this solution, meaning it doesn't look like the solution or a constant multiple of it. So this is a little different than in the previous video because I don't have another value of r that I could write down to have e to the rx. So whatever our second solution is going to look like, it can't be exactly of this form. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to give you what that second solution looks like because deriving it is beyond the scope of this lesson. However, in just a minute, I'll say this is the other solution and we will show that it works. Following that, we will work through one example. All right, I claim that the second solution that we need in order to be able to write down the general solution has this form. So I'll call it y sub 2 of x, and it's x times e to the rx, where r is that value negative b divided by 2a. So it's not the same as e to the rx, nor is it a constant multiple. We do have this multiple term x out front, but that's not a constant value. x changes. Let's verify that this is a solution to the original differential equation. That means that we've got to plug it back in. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to do all of this at once. I hope that's not too ambitious. This is a little bit harder to do concisely compared to when we worked with e to the rx because differentiating x e to the rx twice is a little messier, but that's okay. We'll just, we'll just try. Okay, so let's go. We'll have a times x e to the rx prime prime, so I have to take the derivative of that twice, plus b x e to the r x prime, and then plus c x e to the r x. I am going to write down, so let me just go ahead and immediately jump down. This is going to be a, I'm going to just take the derivative one time and then leave a prime outside. So I'll do product rule here. Derivative of the first is one, leaving us with e, R, X, e to the Rx plus, now take the derivative of the second one, the R drops down. So Rx e to the Rx. I still have to differentiate that one more time. So I'm leaving a prime out front. Then here we'll have B times the derivative of this, which I've just done. So e to the Rx plus, rx e to the rx plus cx e to the rx. We need to take the derivative one more time for this first expression. That's going to leave us with a times r e to the rx plus product rule here. So that's going to be r e to the rx plus r squared x e to the rx 
plus, let me go ahead and distribute the b, so b e to the r x plus b r x e to the r x plus c x e to the r x. I said e to the rx a lot, and that's because it's common to every single term. So what we're going to do now is start trying to simplify this. Our goal is to show that it will simplify all the way to zero, because if I can make this equal zero, that means x e to the rx was a solution to the homogeneous differential equation a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals zero. So that's what we're trying to get at zero. Okay, let's factor out all of these copies of e to the rx so that it we don't have to keep saying it and writing it with every expression. Okay, so on the next line, we will have e to the rx. What I'm actually going to do is make two groupings, one of terms that do not have a leading coefficient of x out front and the others which do. So let's see, what are all the terms that don't have x out front? Uh, these two, which are actually gonna get combined. So we'll have two r, times a, and then this one, and I think that's it, x, x, and x. Okay, so we'll leave those aside for a second. So here, we are going to have a come in, so it's 2ar, and then plus b. I'm going to go ahead and close off those parentheses, and then write plus x e to the rx. So for my second grouping, Again, I'm factoring out that e to the rx, but I'm also going to factor out an x because we have that in quite a few expressions as well. So we're talking about this x here, this one, and this one. Okay, so this expression is x e to the rx times a r squared. Here it's x e to the rx times b r, yeah, times b r. So I'll write a r squared plus b r. And then this is x e to the r x times c. Okay, take a look at that. You probably recognize this expression and know where that's going. However, this one is also nice because we have a value for r. So take a minute and see if you can figure out why this whole expression now needs to be equal to zero. All right, I think I'm going to start with the second term. a r squared plus b r plus c, that's the left-hand side of the characteristic equation. So this quadratic expression automatically equals zero because r is a root to this expression. Uh, because r is a root of the characteristic equation, and that is the left-hand side of the characteristic equation. The other one also equals zero because we know that we are in the situation where r equals negative b divided by 2a. So r does equal negative b over 2a. So this is also zero. So this wouldn't be true for every version of r, but in this particular situation, the r that we have makes this expression zero. This is already zero because r is a root of that quadratic. So both are zero. That means that we have that a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals zero when y has the form x e to the r x for this repeated root r. So x e to the r x is indeed a solution to this differential equation. It's linearly independent from the one that we already found, which was just the little piece e to the r x. So now the general solution to this kind of differential equation is going to be any linear combination of these two. On the next slide, we will look at an example. So we'll find, we'll um, write down the characteristic equation for the example we have. What we will find is that the root is just a repeated real number. Then we will say here is the general solution and then we will solve an initial value problem. Consider this example, y double prime minus four y prime plus four y equals zero. Let's begin by writing down the characteristic equation. That's going to be r squared minus 4r plus 4 equals 0. Go ahead and take a minute to solve for the roots of this, and then identify that we are working in the situation where we have a real repeated root.
if you did the quadratic equation, you should have gotten a repeated root of two. But this is quadratic, and I don't want to overlook that sometimes these can just be factored. So this left-hand side factors as r minus two times r minus two. So this tells us that we have one real repeated root, which is r equals two. Now we can write down the general form of the solution to the homogeneous problem. I'm going to call that y sub h. The sub h to me just means solution to a homogeneous problem. It's going to look like a linear combination of the two building block solutions that we've already identified. One is the classic e to the rx. So for this example, that's going to be e to the 2x. The other one is this new piece, x e to the 2x. So our general solution is c1 e to the 2x plus c2 x e to the 2x. All right, let me pause there. Were this just the second order problem with no initial conditions, we would be done. However, we have an initial value problem. We know that when x equals zero, y is one and y prime is two. So I will do this computation, but I wanna give you a minute just to try it on your own. So go ahead and uh, pause this, make sure you agree with everything I've done so far. And then if you would like, you can try to solve this initial value situation. Okay, let's see if we get the same answer. So here are our initial conditions. When x equals zero, y is one and y prime is two. Okay. We're going to set up two equations for the two unknowns, c1 and c2. Let me start with just x equals zero, y equals one. So the left-hand side, I'm going to replace with this one. And then on the right-hand side, everywhere I have x, I'm going to replace it with zero. That's going to leave me with c1 times one plus c2 times one, or sorry, no, c2 times zero. This is nice. That leading x term there is gonna wipe this whole thing out. So c1 plus zero. Okay, hopefully you had the same happiness when you saw that. that. Okay, immediately we know c1 is one, so that's great. Now let's take the derivative. I will go ahead as I do so and make this replacement that c1 is one. And then we can use this condition to find C2. So y prime is going to be two e to the two x. So here I've already made the replacement that C1 is one, differentiated e to the two x and I get two e to the two x plus C2 e to the two x plus two C2 x e to the two x. There was product rule. Okay. Let's now substitute in that x is zero and y prime is two. On the left-hand side, we'll have two. And on the right-hand side, we will have two e to the zero, that's also two, plus c2 times e to the zero, so that's gonna be c2. And then once again, because of this x expression here, when I plug in x equals zero, this whole thing goes away. All right, so it turns out that c2 is zero. This was a pretty nice system of equations to solve. Okay. So the solution to the initial value problem is going to be y of x equals one e to the two x plus zero x e to the two x. I don't know if it's disappointing that this new piece like went away. I'm a little bit sad actually that it's not there and all we're left with is just e to the two x, but that's fine. Okay, so here is our solution to this initial value problem.